Welcome to the Waterford, Texas Conference. This is the story of Texas water and what a story we have to tell. As you go through these next few days, uh, enjoy exploring the new ideas, catching up with old friends, making new friends, uh, and learning about the water challenges that we all face. But remember uh, that what we do here matters. What you do in your work in the water world matters. Water touches everybody. And I'm at, I will shamelessly steal one of our keynote speaker, George Hawkins, lines. Uh, when you're asked, what is your agency? What is your utility? What is your district, your river authority? What does it do? How many jobs does it create? How, many, how much GDP does it create? George's answer is always, all of it. All the jobs, all the GDP. If, if the people in this room don't do as good a job as they do, none of it works. None of it works without water. So enjoy the conference, enjoy the events, enjoy the people here. Uh, and remember that what you do matters. Thank you for all the work you do. At this point, I'd like to run a brief video from Senator John Cornyn. Hi, I'm Texas Senator John Cornyn. Ensuring that we have a stable water supply is crucial in Texas. Congress understands this and passed the America's Water Infrastructure Act, which among other things, repairs and upgrades systems for wastewater, irrigation, and drinking. Thank you for helping your fellow Texans handle this resource in a responsible way for generations to come. Enjoy your conference. Thank you, Senator Cornyn. I appreciate his staff being here today. Uh, at this point, I'll go ahead and introduce our morning keynote speaker, uh, Speaker Bonin of the Texas House of Representatives. As many of you know, he is no stranger to Texas water. His district in Southeast Texas uh, is where some of the largest rivers in Texas, the Brazos and the Colorado meet the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, uh, he's familiar with the pain of drought, but even more recently, unfortunately familiar with the devastation of flood after Hurricane Harvey. So I know he's very familiar with how important water is to Texas. Speaker, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us and welcome. Good morning, and um, I just want to say thanks for inviting me, a non-water expert, to talk to water experts. That's fun. Um, I will assure you that I will do my best, but I can't promise that I will enlighten or inform any of you beyond the knowledge that you already possess and, and exist. But uh, we are here, more than anything, uh, to highlight the point that water is still at the forefront of importance in Texas. Uh, even though I have, hey, Joe Keith, how are you? Don't put my constituents in the front row, um, and especially the funny ones. But anyway, um, Joe Keith Ripple thought that being the floodplain manager was a better job than being the superintendent. And then it flooded, and he decided he preferred to go back and be a superintendent. Um, but he hasn't done that, thank goodness. But anyway, but it is great to be here. As you probably know by now, I have the honor and privilege of being uh, the Speaker of the House, I'm in my 12th term in the, in the House, and I represent that great legislative district on the Texas Gulf Coast. It encompasses, uh, many people are aware of the Southern Missouri County part of my district, but equally important is the entire county of Matagorda is in my district, which we are, you know, I've had to struggle through the issue of I'm not from Houston. Joe Keith would quit voting for me if he thought I were from Houston. Uh, I'm from Southern Missouri County, a small town of Angleton, and Houston's the big city of the north that scares the hell out of us. So um, I am not from Houston, but we are about an hour out of Houston. And if you go on over to Bay City and Matagorda County, we're even a little further out of Houston. But for those of you in the room who know water planning better than you know uh, geography, that means my district is in Region H and the other half is in Region K, which all of you probably understand better than I do. I've lived my whole life in Brazoria County. Uh, we have a thriving petrochemical industry. It is the top 
uh, economic driver in our communities. It is also a driver for our state and our nation. Uh, that region also accounts for a quarter of our state's population and over half of the state's projected uh, growth from 2020 to 2070 uh, is going to occur in the Gulf Coast region of Texas. More than 1,000 people move to Texas every single day. Uh, the bad news is many of them come from California, um, but the good news is there are plenty from other places. But anyway, um, we welcome the Californians. We just want them to leave California behind um, when they get to Texas. But our most, uh, our, our most fast growing and staggering rate is faster than any other state in the country, which is really an important point when you think about what you work on, which is water planning. And I'm guilty of this, we're all guilty of this. We pound our chest about how Texas is the fastest growing state in the nation and a thousand people move here every day and aren't we awesome? But then we forget we need to plan for that. We need to make sure that we keep an economy and an infrastructure going that a thousand people can move to our state every day and still find it livable and still have a faucet that pours water. And so that's where your planning is so significant and that it's what policymakers like yourselves and those of us in the legislature have to remember is that we can't pound our chest about how phenomenal we are doing and people wanting to come to Texas and think that we've succeeded. That actually rises the challenge of preparedness and planning uh, beyond where it's ever been. Our population, uh, with our population, is expected to increase almost 30 million. From 30 million, we're about 28 million, to 51 million from 2020 to 2070. That's almost a doubling. We also anticipate, of course, with that, a sizable increase on the demand on water. Uh, with that population growth, water demands are projected to increase around 17%, yet our existing water supplies are expe expected to decline by approximately 11% in the same time frame. It's incredibly important that we have the water resources to sustain our robust growth and those of you in the room are playing the vital role of making sure that happens. Every other year, you convene here and talk about the state of Texas water and make key policy recommendations to the members of the Texas legislature. And if none of them are hearing you, let me know, we'll work on it, but I know they are. Um, and believe me, we understand how important it is that we increase our state's water supply by investing in our state's water supply planning and infrastructure. It's critical that we ensure we have the water infrastructure necessary to sustain our cities, our rural areas, our farmers, our ranchers, businesses and industry, and of course, environmental responsibility. But the Texas legislature can't just jump um, from plan to plan. We have to have a plan for future decades and sustain that plan and ensure that that plan has consideration for all the generations that are coming behind us. I think water planning is probably the most forward thinking planning of any planning we have to do as a state because you have to look further out than probably anything else we do. The Water Development Board does that day in and day out. You have us plan ahead by putting together the state water plan every five years, which gives us a forecast on the state of water for the next 50. So think about that. Every five years, you got to plan for the next 50. I was asked the other day, uh, the number one priority that we've declared in the Texas House, the members have stated, is school finance reform and property tax reform. And someone said, so what would success would be? Fixing it? You're just going to fix it? And I said, well, candidly, if we could just move it forward to a level where for the next decade we didn't have to have a broken plan, that would be success because we have such a dynamic and growing state. But compare that to the fact that the Water Development Board and water planners have to plan out for 50 years. We think in school finance, we'd be successful if we could put the issue to rest for 10 years, which is good. But in water, if we had a plan that said, well, we're good for the next 10 years and we'll figure out from there, we'd fail. That really requires thought and vision and execution uh, beyond anywhere else we have to do this. So I commend you all for being a part of it. Most recently, the Water Development did, Board did that planning in 2017 in a water plan that recommended about 5,500 water management strategies to boost water supplies over the next 50 years. Included in the, plan, in, in the plan in bold letters was this, 
If strategies are not implemented, approximately one-third of Texas's population would have less than half the municipal water supplies they, they will require during a drought of record in the year 2070. If you don't act now, those water shortages could amount to an annual economic loss from $73 billion in 2020 to a whopping $151 billion in 2070. And frankly, we say whopping in 2070, but 73 billion in 2020 is whopping. Um, it's over half the annual state budget. I think we'd feel it. Those statistics are a stark reminder of what the legislature must do this session and the state water plan will serve as our roadmap and our guide. That roadmap helps us identify and prioritize projects that demand our attention and let us know actions that need to be taken in order to keep us ahead of water demand, especially in our times of drought. Texas has a long history of drought and our water resources are routine, re, routinely threatened by drought. As everyone in this room knows, 2011 was the worst single year Texas drought in our state's recorded history. It took, it took its toll on all aspects of our economy with losses totaling $11 billion. That wasn't too many years back. And they, they took that they took that toll to the polls in November of 2013 to pass a constitutional amendment that used $2 billion from the Rainy Day Fund to finance water infrastructure projects across our state. My great friend and desk mate, Chairman Alan Ritter from Nederland, spearheaded that significant water policy um, for Texans that session. Do you recall the enormity of that proposition's passage? I do because I was so proud for Alan's success. He'd worked on that for many years. And I want to make a point. Alan Ritter made that happen in 2011. But what also propelled it forward and changed what had not succeeded in previous sessions was Speaker Strauss used his voice as the Speaker of Texas and said water is the priority in the Texas House. And that is what helped drove it. One, I want to thank and acknowledge Chairman Ritter, but also Speaker Strauss. But I also want y'all to understand the role of Speaker is to not tell members how to legislate, what the policy is supposed to be, but to give a voice to the issues that members of the legislature bring to the top as the priorities for Texas. And not dictate the answers to them, but give a voice and strength to the opportunity of their coming to that conclusion. And that's exactly was the perfect partnership and success that we saw from Speaker Strauss and Chairman Ritter in 2011. And I believe it's changed our state. And they did extraordinary things that I, I know in history, I hope they're both remembered for that leadership. I mentioned earlier that my legislative district sits right in the heart of the Gulf Coast. And so many petrochemical companies do call it home. In my community, I have the largest petrochemical facility in North America, owned by Dow Chemical. And we have BASF, and we have Freeport LNG coming in. We have Chevron Phillips, Conoco Phillips, Phillips 66, Tenaris, STP nuclear plant. I could go on and on. And, and, and for me and my district, the little ones would be big somewhere else. And so we know the advantage they give us by employing thousands of people in our communities. But it also requires a massive amount of water to fuel their daily operations. Not only is my district home to those titans of industry, but also to the legions of rice farmers who depend on water from the sky in the Colorado and Brazos rivers to make a living. Those farmers felt the heavy burden, uh, burden in those long years of drought. The industry felt it, agriculture support services felt it, the Chamber of Commerce, the tourism business, the schools and the families, they all felt it in a truly meaningful way. Water is an issue that affects all of us. It's from the Red River to the Rio Grande Valley, from El Paso to Orange. We need to prepare ourselves as if we're in the year 2011 by developing sustainable water plans designed to withstand our worst possible drought scenario. While droughts can rear their ugly heads at any time, we have good reason to be positive about this year. The state of Texas started 2019 with its highest water supply in more than 25 years, which only complicates 
getting people to understand we better start planning now. As today, there is more than, we are more than 98% drought free. Now, I promise you I won't highlight that anymore because it discourages those for planning. Um, and at almost 90% capacity of our statewide water supply, that is the highest amount since 1993. As Texans, we know that droughts can come as quickly as they go. So we must still forge ahead and do everything we can to prepare for what might happen the months and years ahead. We will take advantage of this legislative session to do just that. From now until the end of May, we will utilize the time we have to highlight important water policy issues. Water supply has been and will continue to be a big and important decision and discussion. Especially what is the man for water in Texas, while the man for water in Texas is increasing, while groundwater supplies are decreasing. With the most finite amount of resources and a growing demand, we have to give creative and innovative in solving our state's water issues. Take brackish groundwater desalinization projects, for example. The state of Texas possesses an abundance of brackish groundwater that can help meet projected water shortages at a rate of roughly 175,000 acre feet of water of new water per year by 2060. Around the state, we've seen proven models and examples of desalinization technologies that are both innovative and cost effective. We must encourage the development of sources like this to help meet our future water needs. Equally important is encouraging the, the reuse and recycling of water. The state's water plan's water reuse recommendations would produce an additional million acre feet per year by 2070, accounting for 13% of all water new water supplies. Let us not forget that water re reuse and conservation go hand in hand. Reducing the co consumption and waste of water combined with the reuse of water will make the water management more efficient and better ensure that we have enough water to support future economic growth. I mentioned earlier that the state of Texas is fortunate enough to not be in a drought at the moment. That's largely due to an increased rainfall, you may have noticed, at the end of 2018, we did. During times of drought, we as Texans anxiously await the next big weather event that will bring in enough rain to bust the drought and make us even again. Drought busters come and go, and while we're thankful for the rain, they many times lead to hazardous flooding, and that calls our attention to the importance of mitigating and planning for flooding. The state of Texas has a long and storied history of great floods, yet we do not have a strategy for flood risk management planning, and it's clear that we must change that and do it now. The Water Development Board worked diligently over the past year to conduct its safe flood assessment, state flood assessment, which made recommendations to the legislature in the weeks leading up to this session. In the final report, the Water Development Board underscored the importance of the legislature becoming more proactive in flood mitigation by developing a strategic flood risk management plan that prioritizes drought and flood resiliency projects makes policy enhancements, and improves mapping and modeling efforts. But it's important to accomplish these tasks in a way that is both meaningful and strategic. Our effort into flood, improved flood mitigation must be coupled with coordinated planning on the local level, proper mapping, and backed by sound scientific data. By following through on these policy recommendations, the state of Texas will be better able to identify and communicate flood risks to Texans. In doing so, we can prevent property losses, reduce weather-induced costs to the state, and most importantly, save Texans' lives. In the fall of 2017, the state of Texas faced one of its greatest tests when Hurricane Harvey made landfall, unleashing over 60 inches of torrential rain within eight days, wrecking havoc on the Houston region and devastating communities from Bay City to Beaumont. When all was said and done, Harvey dumped an estimated 58 million acre feet of water over Texas in eight days, making it the single most significant rainfall event in recorded history of the United States, not simply Texas. Flooding was widespread, streets were impassable, residents were stranded. 
While we've done so much to rebuild in the aftermath, Texans are still recovering a year and a half later. It's the duty of the state to help them finish that recovery. Rebuilding our communities, strengthening our infrastructure, mitigating floods and ensuring Texas is better equipped to respond to future natural disasters will be at the forefront of our members in the House priorities this session. Governor Abbott's Commission to Rebuild Texas recently reported 43 recommendations for improving our state's disaster response and how to better inoculate ourselves against future disasters. Highlighted in these reports is the need for our state to have better systems in place to streamline our long-term approach to disaster recovery and become more efficient and organized in statewide coordination efforts. This will help local governments, businesses, and individuals to have quicker access to disaster assistance and help them to find clear information when and where they need it. The last thing Texas need in a moment of crisis is to run into bureaucratic red tape that presents them, prevents them from getting the help and resources they need in a timely fashion. I was heartened to read this week that the Texas Water Development Board had awarded an additional $500,000 to two organizations in Southeast Texas to be used for Hurricane Harvey recovery. That money is so important to the area and will go a long way to help repair wastewater infrastructure and elevate vital equipment to be above flood devastation. It's just a small glimpse of what the Texas Water Development Board is doing to provide relief in our area. And the Texas House joins you in that, in that effort. We will work with you, with Governor Abbott, with Lieutenant Governor Patrick, the Texas, and the Texas Senate to devote the funding needed to help Texans make a full and complete recovery. Yesterday, the Texas House took the first steps in working towards these issues and more. And one of the first and most important, the most important responsibility as speaker, I announced the House committee assignments for the 86th legislature. And when you're new as speaker, the slate is clean. Shortly after Speaker Strauss announced he was not going to seek re-election to his House seat, in turn meaning he would not continue to be speaker, I started speaking publicly about the fact that I'm really not the chairman of Ways and Means anymore. We all, we all now just become privileged to be a member of the Texas House, but no one holds a chair or a position. And so it was a clean slate, but I hope everyone appreciates and recognizes the significance of the leadership and the passion that Chairman Larson has shown at Natural Resources and on Water Issues. So I was without hesitation and without question honored to reappoint him as the chair of Natural Resources yesterday and gave him an exceptional young leader in Will Metcalf as his vice chair. Both men requested with great effort to be on that committee. And every member of the Natural Resources Committee asked to be a part of that committee. One of the things that we're blessed in the Texas House with is the vision and the personality of Lyle Larson to lead water issues. I've never worked with a legislator who is more comfortable to throw an idea out and allow those to come in and tell them how bad an idea it might be or tell them how much they might disagree with it. And he's unfazed and he's undaunted. His blood pressure never rises. He loves the discussion. And when you're willing to have that level of a discussion, you get to great future planning. And that's what I think makes Lyle Larson an extraordinary chair of natural resources. And truthfully, he makes me really proud to have the honor to get to name him that chair because it makes me look good. Thank you. So at the end of the day, the vitality of our citizens, our economy, and the state depends on how we prepare when it comes to disaster response in water planning. We simply must make planning in advance a top priority if we are to possess adequate, sustainable, and affordable water supplies in times of serious drought. I wanna commend the Water Development Board for all that they're doing to prepare us for those challenges 
and for those who are here today participating in that important process. There is much to accomplish in the coming months, but I'm confident that in our shared ability, we will get things done. I look forward to working with each and every one of you, and I want to tell you, make sure that the Texas House and the Texas Legislature is meeting your leadership and your vision to ensure that all Texans are ready for the next drought or the next disaster in a better way than we've ever been ready in the future or history of Texas. Thank you for inviting me to be here this morning. Thank you.